This video is for the MB200 front disc brake kit and I'm installing this on my Coleman CT200U-EX mini bike. Check the video description for more details, uh, any tips, uh, tricks, information, links, uh, places to purchase it, any updates. And uh, you're welcome to post your experience in the comments. If you install this kit, how did it go? Uh, what what did you have to do? How many spacers did you have to use, etc.? It'd be helpful to everyone. And also, if you have any tips or tricks on my particular install after seeing this video, they're welcome too. Uh, I found out about this from Black Sixty Six on his channel, and I'm just making a supplement to this. I will have a link in the video description to this channel. So the first thing you want to do after you purchase this is you want to put a tire or your old tire on the MB200 rim. Then you want to install the rim here and snug up the nut. Don't bother with all the brackets and the caliber yet because here's, here's what you need to check. Once you get the tire mounted, and the nugs snug. You want to look here at the rotor bolts here. And you'll see why I'm telling you in a minute. Now on my particular install, the rotor bolts were hitting a shock. So what I had to do is I had to add an extra washer here for a spacer. Here's the stack washer. And then here's the one I added. This brought out the gap so I could clear the rotor bolts and the shock here. And there's plenty of gap here. It's a little hard to see in the camera, but there's quite a big gap. I already took it out riding, so that was fine. So do this first. If your rotor bolts are not hitting when you put the axle on and you don't need the spacer, follow Black 66 video and see what happens. If your brake bolts are hitting the shock tower, then add the spacer and follow my video. There's obviously tolerances from mini bike to mini bike, even on the same model. So on my particular case, let me get the light here. Okay, my particular case, I installed the brack here. I installed the two spacers provided in the kit. There's one, two. Then I ins installed the caliber. And what you want to do is lightly tighten each caliber bolt. These are 10 millimeters. Now you're going to have just a little bit play in here, which is good. That gives you adjustment room. And what I did and what I suggest you do, light, very lightly tighten these. So you had just that little bit of a play here that will rock back and forth. Tighten it just enough so where you move it, it stays. And then what you want to do with that play is put it all the way down. It's not going to be much, but put it all the way down. Then with one hand, hold it in the down position and then tighten these up all the way. And what you want to do is then rotate the wheel and make sure you have proper alignment here. 
If it's off a little, as you rotate the wheel, you're going to hear a sound like this as you turn. That means your alignment's off. If you hear that tapping, and then you're going to have to try a bunch of different things. But as before, get that little bit of play in here that you have. Get it all the way in the down position, hold it, tighten these, and see what you get. If that doesn't work, loosen these up a little bit again so you could just move this and try it all the way in up position and tighten them, rotate it, and see if you get the tapping or not. You could also try in the middle position. If that doesn't work, you're going to have to try. adding washers right here you might add one you might have to take off one of these two plates and put two washers three washers in there you'll I'll have to experiment but it, it pretty likely you'll be able to get away with just two in that little bit what play you have in here, you should be able to adjust it out. If not, you could do it with this uh, spacing here. You're either going to have to come closer or farther. You could use one washer, two washers, three washers. If you use two washers and then go to three or go to one washer and none of that's good, you could try a ultra thin washer or even a copper washer so you can get in between like two and three washers so you could fine tune it. In my particular case, I didn't have the one to two milliliter gap here that people were getting, which I don't think matters. It doesn't make a difference. But so when you mounted the collar, it's just a tiny bit of play. Like I said, I don't think that matters. But in my particular case, it's rock solid. As you can see, there's no play at all. Another thing I had to do is I had to bleed the brakes. And that was no problem. But you might have to bleed yours too. I'll put out a link in the description on an excellent video I found how to bleed these brakes. One thing you want to note is if you have to start putting washers in here to space this properly, you're going to run shorter and shorter on the length of the bolt. So you might want to watch out for that. Black 66 since he used so many washers and only had so many threads left. He uh, used Loctite uh, thread lock to keep it in place just to make sure it didn't come out. And if your setup is like mine and you have to put the extra washer on the axle here, your axle bolt's going to come up shorter. And then you have the bracket too. So you're going to even lose more axle space. So I cut a nylock nut down short to compensate for that. That's basically it. I'm just going to show some close-ups. Again, post your experience in the comments, questions, any tips or tricks. Also, if you believe the brakes, I use DOT4. You could use three or four. The four has a higher boiling point, so it's a little better. I'll just show you some pictures here, or close-ups here. Uh, finish up the video, and that'll, that'll be it. See? So, This close-ups here, the collar that goes to your shack. Close
close-ups of the spacer washers I used. Uh, the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the caliber in. Okay, that's about it.